Okay, hey everybody, here is Shepard. Um, to start this video, I just want to let you know there will be some spoilers. We are looking at an endgame set, so if you have not yet completed the offline tutorial and are concerned about seeing what that armor looks like and what it does, I recommend tuning in until after you have finished the main portion of the storyline, getting you through high rank. One additional point to say in this video is this build is designed generally for offline play. At the very least, it should only be used with coordinated online play with people who you can speak with and build around. The reason being is this build focuses on slicing shot. As you can see here, slicing shot, when it's shot near somebody, will explode. And this is not a flinch, this is not a trip, this is an explosion like you would get from a barrel bomb. That means there's very little to no way to mitigate this outside of a rock steady mantle, and seeing as most people will not get that to very late game, it is something to generally be avoided when you're playing online around other blade masters. So, if you're online using this set and you're not being considered the other blade masters, you're you're not playing nice. Uh, the set can easily be switched around a tiny bit for piercing if you wanted. Although there are better pierce sets, so if you end up spending a lot of time making this and wanting to use it pierce pierce is okay as is paralysis okay so let's get into the nitty-gritty of the set the set here is designed to get as much sli slicing shot out as we possibly can we're using the toby kadachi heavy bowgun it's upgraded all the way and it has been given three reload assists okay well why is that well that's because with three reload assists we're able to take our slicing ammo, which normally reloads uh, pretty slowly, down to normal. It already has a standard recoil speed, and there's nothing you can do in terms of modifications to speed that up. As for armor, we're really focusing on the set bonus from Xeno. Xeno lets it so that on a random basis, we're able to use a shot without expending one of the shots from our clip. And this is going to be demonstrated in the fight that we're going to do. In terms of the actual skills that we get, the base effects from the, the armors is flinch free, which we're not really using. Um, you could use the Xeno Jiva headgear alpha if you wanted to get special shot up. I prefer to just focus on slicing when possible. I don't really use the special shot all that often, although you certainly could. If you don't have many good decorations, you don't need to get a level 2 decoration in. This one I'm lucky enough to have peak performance so I throw that in. Rathalos Male Beta. It's for the two points in weakness exploit which is going to give us a combined 30% up to 50% from a, the additional points that we have. The Xeno Jiva Claws which gives us flinch free which doesn't do too much for us but gives us one level of critical boost and contributes to the set bonus. Xeno Jiva Spines. Uh, this is the beta one. Um, this is for not the beta resistance, but really just to finish out the set, and mostly because I wanted to get a third level of weakness exploit. Right? So we've got critical boost, three levels of weakness exploit, and an attack charm three. This is actually probably not the best one. Um, if I could get a critical boost level two talisman. And hold on, I might do some movie magic right now. Okay, so you can see here, critical boost. Um, yeah, that's, that's going to take some work. So... If I had the ability to, I would do one of two things. I would either get critical boost up to level 3 through a talisman, which is going to be probably very late game, or I would at least have the decorations to get to attack up 5. As it is right now, we're not even a week into release, so we do not have really perfect setup. What I do have kind of helps mitigate some of the shortcomings, right? So we can see here, let's just go straight to a thing on my decorations. And I'll show you what I have in there and why. And again, this is just from what I have. What you're going to have is going to be completely different. Um, quick sheath is always nice. Depending on what you're fighting, heavy bowgun sheaths kind of slowly, and it's nice to be able to put it away. It's a good one slot. Why not? Peak performance is great. You really shouldn't be taking any hits with this, so that's good. If you do take hits, I always like to keep fortify in. One death or cart on a quest will always be a huge boost. Attack because you know, it's a great single slot. Jumping is perfect. One level of evade extender on heavy bowgun puts you in a position where you can almost always move yourself out of the way of an attack a monster is going to do. 
Likewise, I put protection in only because I don't really have any very good one slots here. There's really nothing you can do. I mean, there are other things you could throw in, you know, crisis, maybe maintenance, maybe monster. It really depends on what you've gotten. For me, if I'm going to take a hit and I have a chance to get protection, I'm going to take it. Okay. So again, the focus on this is slicing shot. In terms of what I bring in my crafting list, I'm sorry, not my crafting list, my item pouch, I'm bringing our standard stuff, you know, might see demon drugs, all these other items here. But then I'm also bringing slash berries, okay? So you're going to want to go down to your trade yard, okay? And make sure your dudes are farming flash ber or slash berries for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at that over here. Yeah? Okay, so just in one round, right? I have enough for a couple quests. Generally speaking, you're going to be going back to restock well, whenever a monster leaves, if a monster leaves. But otherwise, you're going to use the ability to craft mid-quest to get yourself powered up. So, just as a demonstration, we are going to go ahead and fight just a standard Kushala in the jungle. Okay, before we get into that, I just want to go over the items that we have and discussions on how to effectively farm it. So, Xenojiva is just Xenojiva. If you do not have him available to fight, you could always respond to an SOS. It goes without saying, scales and shells will be normal body carves. The horn, you are going to have to try and break the head for the best chance at that. For Rathalos plate, fighting high rank Rathalos, you should be getting plenty of those. Otherwise, breaking the head, back, and cutting the tail will get you the highest chances of that. The hardest thing to get is probably going to be your Rathalos gem. I farmed this for quite a while. Again, or sorry, the Rathalos ruby. Again, concept here, break the head, break the back, cut the tail, capture. It's going to be your best chance at doing it. Doing investigations with gold chances help as well. All right, Xenojiva um, arms, shell and claw. Again, veil, same deal, just going to be fighting him. Wyvern gem can be found from monsters that don't have their own specific ones. My understanding is Baroth has a pretty high drop chance. I never seem to run out of them, so hopefully you don't have too big of a difficulty making it. The spine, uh, shell, wing, and tail. Again, you're going to have to cut the tail, although I think it is a standard carve and quest reward. So don't worry too much if you don't cut it off. A Dogaran plate, if you can't find this, um, you can actually, I didn't even mention it with the plate as well, you can always trade for it. So those silver tickets you get for completing rewards, you can go down to the Melder and make them. I'll demonstrate that briefly before we get into the quest. Finally, Rathalos legs, same deal with the plate, care press scale and sack, and then the plate. And if you can't make the Rathalos chest, just the standard bone chest that you already have made will actually help out a little bit. You're already going to be able to be getting a little bit of bonus attack, but also that 5% affinity in the similar situation that I'm in. Okay, meld items, go over to the monster parts. And you can see with the silver Wavarian print, oh, print, of which you should have some, you can trade for it. Okay, so if you're really desperate, feel free to use the print if you want to make this set. Okay, let's go right back into the hunt. Okay. So, hoping to accomplish a couple things with this quest. One is to demonstrate the weapon overall. Second is to kind of show off flinch locks a little bit. If we're lucky, we're going to be able to kick this frog just right. Yeah, we did okay. Yeah! That looked weird. And it was semi-stylish. So, what we're trying to do is proc as many flinches on the head as possible. One, it's a flinch. Two, that's where he's going to take the most damage. And really, the amount of crits we proc, as well as the spare shots we proc, is going to determine how quickly this all happens.
We do want to try and avoid being hit. We do have peak performance right now in just our current setup. Uh, this isn't going well. Okay, there we go. Perfect. In some ways, waiting towards the end of his activity or his flinch is better. We, um, oops. We have a full quit. I was trying to reload there. That's what I get for being lazy. We'll take this as an opportunity to heal. Get our peak performance back. And also, to craft. We're going to get all our slicing backs, use triangle. We actually should probably equip our flash pods as well. You see there, the uh, evasion distance is not enormous, but for me, it's always been significant enough to get me just far enough out of the way without taking me halfway across the zone to be worthwhile. There we go. Now, one thing to know is these, these shots do have a little bit of kickback, so sometimes you'll find yourself in a position where your posi back is up against a wall. It'll feel really nice because you're not getting out of position anymore. And we try not to aim for the, uh, the feet at all. They don't take much damage. They don't really help contribute to the flinch much. Getting some solid, solid uh, crits going off here. Okay, getting down to our last clip before we're going to have to combine again. Yep, we're going to craft before we run out. We don't want to automatically reload into just a small clip there. Now we should be getting pretty close to the head breaking. When the head breaks, if you were so inclined, you could also use the slicing, the slicing shot to cut the tail. I don't really care as much might do it anyways. And it depends on how he faces. Right now I'm just trying to keep him from leaving the zone. Okay. And that... That went pretty smooth. That was 4 minutes 28 seconds. This, of course, being a high rank Kushala. Something to note, of course, this weapon, again, does perform semi-well as a status gun. It does have sleep and paralysis. Actually, has a fair amount of paralysis. It, in a pinch, can do pierce, a little bit of sticky, and a three, three, cluster, uh, three slots is not bad for that. And really, it's just about you know, maximizing the amount of slicing you can get out at any one time. Uh, there are a number of variants you can do with this set. If you were not in love with bonus shot, you can feel free to continue to use the Kadachi Lion, which I think is probably the premier slicing gun. Use something that focused a little bit more on more attack, um, potentially more critical. Although as it is, it already does get quite a bit of critical. We're just limited by our decorations and our Talisman. Okay, as expected, nothing fantastic. So, again, uh, just as a final reminder, remember, this is a very solo-specific set. If you're going online, make sure you're playing with people you can coordinate with. Shoot at things that Blade Masters will not be near, such as wings or tails, hopefully. Uh, higher parts of Tails if, if they're unable to, to get to it. But otherwise, enjoy it in solo play. It is as reliable on other monsters as it is Kushala. Kushala is just a pretty good demonstration. Okay, so please let me know if you enjoyed this video in the comments below. 
If there is another weapon or style guide you'd like to see me do, uh, I'd be more than happy to do my analysis and bring out the Shep Sheets and see what the ideal combination will be. I already have one planned for a generic Blade Master set, which would be very good for raw damage, but I'd be more than happy to put my brain to the test and see what we can come up with. Also, I am more than happy to help answer your questions in real time. I am streaming six days out of the week now, so Eastern Standard Time, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, about 7 p.m. till, oh, sometimes midnight. Fridays is Community Hunts, so you can come on by and join in, and I might even be able to help you with your hunts. Usually about 7 p.m. until well, a little after midnight, and then long streams Saturday and Sunday. So definitely make sure to check me out, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Otherwise, this is Shepard saying good luck, and have a good hunt.